Welcome to lesson two. If you remember, lesson one was about the Bible. Lesson two is about salvation. So, why do we need to be saved? Because people are guilty before God and have a sinful nature. Okay. Remember, God is the standard of, of goodness. He's the standard of right and wrong. Um, and when we, the creation, act contrary to God's character, sin, um, it, um, he, he hates sin. So, Romans, <clears throat> excuse me, Romans 5.12 says, Therefore, just as through one, one man sin entered into the world, and death through sin, and so death spread to all men, because all sinned. And he goes on. But I'm just going to stop there. I just want to read that little excerpt there. And then Ephesians uh, 2, 3. Um, Among them we all too for... We, too, all formerly lived in the lusts of our flesh, indulging the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, even as the rest. So, we are guilty before God and have a sinful nature. Um, so, what is sin? Sin is any failure... I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, failure to conform um, to the moral law of God an act, attitude, or action, or I'm sorry, or nature. I, I know maybe that seemed a little bit confusing. Um, I'll say it again, and by all means, pause the video and, and just think about it for a second if, if you're having a hard time with this. Sin is any failure to conform to the moral law of God, an act, attitude, or nature. Now, it's at this part of the discussion that there's always somebody who says, well, I don't want to be a robot. Well, first off, let's look at that. You are a robot now when you live in when you live in sin. You will always do things according to um, yourself or according to um, um, whatever is most pleasing to you. So, I mean, either way, if you look at it like that, oh, there's nothing I can do. It's all written in the stars or some nonsense like that. Then ultimately, it'd be the exact same for the opposite thing. If that makes sense. Uh, for those of you who, who weren't thinking that, let me try and explain it for you. Um, some non-Christian people believe that in following Christ and being conformed to his image, you will be made into this robot that does not feel anything and things exactly without thought um, or without creativity. You know, basically all people, Christianity is all about everybody being the same. And I mean... What I'm saying is, if if that were true, which it's not, then the exact same true would be, then the exact same, then the exact same thing would be true for the opposite, that those people who aren't Christians are bound to be robots and act like each other. Which I mean, in a sense, in a sense, I guess there's some truth to that. Um, but also, we're not talking about being robots. God made people. Unique. God made them creative. He made them enjoy certain things while other people don't enjoy things. I, I like playing the guitar. There are some people who do not like playing the guitar. Um, does it have anything to do with sinning? No, not at all. We all have our individual personalities. Okay. So when we're talking about being conformed, we're more talking about... Um, It's hard to say without an example, so I'll actually say it in an example. When somebody wrongs you, responding in love rather than responding in hate. If you are not of God, you will respond in hate. If you are of God, you will respond in love. So, um, not, not just to say perfectionism or anything like that, but I'm sure you get what I'm saying. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Um, so the the result of sin is punishment and separation from God. That's the only thing that it ever leads to. Sin creates more sin. 
Some people think, oh, I'll just do this, or I'll just do this. No, no. Sin is never content. It, 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 it always wants to expand its borders a little bit more. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The free gift. So, it takes us to the next question. How then are we saved? Christ died in our place covering the sins of those who accept. It's that simple. Christ did it. See, we don't need to do because Christ did. Um, so Romans 5, 8 through 9 says, um, But God demonstrates his own love towards us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath of God through him. Notice how it says, saved from the wrath of God, not from something else. Um, Ephesians 2. I will say this. If you are a non-Christian and you go to the Bible, you're never going to find what you're looking for. If you are a Christian and you go to the Bible, you will always find what you're looking for. Does that make sense? And what I mean is this. As a Christian, you'll have it set in your mind that, that you want something or that you need something. You'll go to the Word and you'll start understanding that God said that the only thing that you need is food, clothes on your back, that's pretty much it. Um, see what I mean? And so you start to change as a Christian. But for those of you who are not Christians and try to go to the Word to answer your problems or, or to criticize or whatever, you're never going to find it because you already don't believe it. And then you go to it with the state of disbelief, and so all you're trying to do is you're trying to disprove it even more because of your attitude. See what I mean? So you're going to miss even the lessons that you could have learned. Um, Ephesians 2, 8 through 9 says, um, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not as a result, not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. Um, so we accept by turning from sin and trusting in Christ daily. Um, it mentions this in John. It says, uh, unless someone is born of the water and of the Spirit. Well, the water um, is referencing back to John the Baptist, where his, his, um, his ministry was baptizing in water. And um, what, what was that? What was John's baptism? It's repentance. It was for the repentance of sin. So basically what he's saying, and then the Spirit would obviously be the regeneration of the Holy Spirit. So what he's saying is believing in the Lord. And how do you? what happens when you really believe in the Lord is you repent from your sin. That's something that goes along with it. And we'll talk about that and how works fit in in a little bit. Um, and Christ, trust in Christ daily. You know, you can be saved today and then mess up tomorrow and still be saved, okay? But you're just not really living in the fullness because you're not trusting Christ. Does that make sense? Um it's one of those things where you kind of have to do it to for it to click up here. Um, so if you're having a hard time, I encourage you to, to do it, and then you'll understand. Um, James um, one two through three says, "Consider all joy, my brethren, when you can when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance, and let endurance have its perfect results, so that you may be perfect and complete, and lacking in nothing." Um, now, I do want to point out something, though. Um, it has been taught at various times that there is a time in, in a, as a Christian that you will be made perfect. Well, this is both true and not true. First off, when you are saved, you are made righteous. Okay, Not perfect. You are still human. You are still going to mess up. But you are made righteous because you are not righteous. Christ is righteous, and his righteousness was imputed to you. Um... But as far as a, a sinking encounter after salvation that, that makes you perfect, that's just not true. There's there's no biblical basis for that. Um, it's just something that was unfortunately taught in when more charismatic denominations were picking up speed. Um, so, Hebrews 11, uh, 1 says... Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen, for by it the men of old gained approval. Um, so although we are saved, salvation is an ongoing process which ends at death. 
It is a relationship, a matter of the heart. It's something that you that, that, that you don't just want and done. Okay, I accepted Jesus, now I'm just going to live however I want. In fact, uh, Hebrews strongly warns against that. Um, Romans 8, 24. And you know, the thing is, is if you live in disobedience, you will even eventually find yourself uh, not believing in God. It's just the natural result. Because sin spreads, and it changes the way you think. Oftentimes, people who have panic attacks don't have right thinking. Um, 8, 24 um, through 25 says, For in hope we have been saved, but hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what he already sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, with perseverance we wait eagerly for it. And um, then he goes on to say in uh, Hebrews, Uh, 10.23 Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. Talking about that perseverance. 12.14 Pursue peace with all men and the sanctification without which no one will see the Lord. <sighs> it's it's, 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 it's some, summated in the idea of already but not yet. Are we saved? Yes. But we are being saved in the sense that we will not experience full salvation until the our until our deaths. Right here. Um, so here's just a little a little chart here to kind of diagram this. We were saved to sin before when we were not saved. Okay. And although we did good things and bad things, it ultimately didn't matter because our works couldn't earn our salvation, and neither could our um, bad things lose our salvation because we weren't saved. Okay? But then, at conversion, you are instantly taken into this realm, growing in holiness, where you're like this. And for those of you who are filled with the Holy Spirit, you're still just like another person. For those of you who are not, you're still just like another Christian. Um, uh, and, you know, with that being said, every Christian is given a measure of the Holy Spirit. So when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, it doesn't make you like a super Christian. All that, that means is that you are... Um, well, we'll talk about that in a future lesson. Um, and then when you when you die, or when Jesus comes back, whichever happens first, you are taken into this realm called perfect holiness where you can no longer sin and you are made into a new person. Um, and not to say new, you will still be you, just without the sin that scarred you. Um, <clears throat> In uh, 12.14, though, I, in Hebrews 12.14, I do want to point something out, though. It, it says, and the sanctification without which no one will see the Lord. It's talking about the way of, of seeking after the Lord. And he makes that kind of a... Hebrews is kind of all about not where you're at, but where you're headed. Are you, you, are, you guys over here are not headed towards good things. You over here kind of are. You know what I mean? Just kind of... So maybe they won't. I'll just go ahead and skip on past that. So how are we saved? Repent means to turn from. Okay, um, So you're turning from your sin and turning towards something else. So by definition, salvation can't possibly be, oh, I accepted Jesus and I went and lived my own way. Obviously, you're still going to sin. I'm not saying that at all. You're still going to sin. But um, there is that turning towards the Lord. So... Trust. It is a moment-by-moment -moment choice. For instance, let's say yesterday you trusted him, but today you didn't. See what I mean? Um, not to say that you lose your salvation, but, I mean, Christianity and Christian growth requires a continual dependence on the Lord. So repent from sin and trust in Christ. That's 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 how we're saved. And when, when you are a Christian and you mess up, you repent to the Lord. You, you confess your sins to him. And... Um, then you're restored in proper relationship with him again. What happens if you're a Christian that ha with with sin in your life? Well, think of it as erecting a wall between you and God. That's how I would, that's how I would do it. Um, so, fact leads to faith, which leads to feeling. Okay, fact Jesus rose from the dead. Faith we trust that he will come back for us. Feeling uh, this eventually throughout the course of your salvation and you will feel something. Um, I know it's often said the the new Christian high. 
Um, see, but the problem is of today, we go feeling faith and then just kind of make stuff up to fit with that. Um, oh, well, this, this church feels right for me, but does it teach the Bible? But it feels right, but is, does it teach the Bible? And then, so then we put, put faith in our feelings, um, which feelings come and go. You really can't, can't do that. What if I keep on sinning after I'm saved? Uh, confess your wrongdoing uh, to God and seek him. Um, I think I have this somewhere, but just in case I don't, you, you hit whatever you focus on. Think of it as when I was in construction, if I looked at my finger, I was inevitably going to hit my finger with a hammer. But if I looked at the nail, I was inevitably going to hit the, ha hit the nail with the hammer. Does that make sense? It's the exact same thing with sin. When we mess up, we focus on trying not to do it again, rather than focusing on God. See what I mean? So inevitably we're going to mess up again. There is such a thing as overthinking a sin. Like, let me give you an example. Okay, so you mess up on porn or something like that. Okay, and so then you're beating yourself up. Oh, I'm such a terrible person. And then you keep saying, okay, I'm not going to do it again. I'm not going to look at porn today. I'm not going to look at porn today. I'm not going to look at porn today. And so all day porn is going through your head. See what I mean? You didn't focus on the Lord. You will hit whatever you set your eyes on. So, <clears throat> and Christianity really is not about where you are that's important. It is, it is about where you are headed. Are you headed towards a dead end or are you headed towards growth? Uh, Romans 8.13 says, For if you are living according to the flesh, you must die. But if by the Spirit you are putting to death the, de the deeds of the body, you will live. Putting to death, not have put to death. Um, and... Matthew 16, 14. Through, I believe, the end of the verse. Let me see. Um, through 26. So not quite to the end. And they said, Some say John the Baptist and others Elijah, but still others Jeremiah, one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. I also say to you that you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overpower it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall have been bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth still uh, shall have been loosed in heaven. Now I do want to stop here real quickly and, and, and point this out. This is not condoning word of faith at all okay um he's not saying uh if you look at the context which obviously i don't have time for this class but if you look at the context he's not saying so i can proclaim anything to be and it will be and when i'm witnessing i just declare that that person will be loosed if this person has wronged me i i declare that they will be bound that's Whoa, step back. The whole word of faith thing really has no basis biblically. This is definitely not teaching that. Um, verse 20, And then he warned the disciples that they should tell no one that he was the Christ. From that time Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised up on the third day. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this shall never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are not setting your mind on God's interest but man's. You know, and then later Peter again uh, messes up when he um, denies Jesus. But did he lose his salvation? Did, no, no, he did not. Um, he was actually became one of the leading leaders in the church. <laughs> So, um, then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up this cross and follow me. So, once again, talking about the process of following. Um, so, believe he will forgive you. Sin remains, but no longer reigns. And what I mean by that? You will still sin, but you are not bound by sin anymore. So, do I mean... Uh, with Christ's blood fall uncovering you, you are still unclean? No, that's not what I'm saying at all. Um, because your righteousness is not yours, but God's.
So, um, that takes us to the next bullet point there. Sinning is different than living in sin. Let's say you have a kid and they lie. Well, you're going to get them in trouble, but not as severely as you would if they have a, li a life pattern of lying. You understand the difference? And it's kind of the exact same thing. Um, when we are Christians, we, we sin. But when we are of the world, we live in sin. That, that, that's where we reside. So, um, don't give up, but don't pretend it didn't happen. When you mess up, there's two things people do. First off, oh, well, you know, I'm not going to beat myself up over that. Or they go to the other extreme and say, oh, man, I'm such a terrible person. Well, you know, don't do either of those things. You'll just hold yourself back from, from actually learning something. Um, so you want to remember it long enough to learn something, but not long enough to uh, guilt trip yourself. Um, so if you live long enough, guess what? You will sin on purpose. Uh, but we seek God by fasting, prayer, worshiping, studying his word, focusing our attention and thoughts on him. This is how we worship God, or how we seek God. And, and there's more on that in the in an upcoming um, lesson. Um, so I'm just going to kind of blow past that. Um, so I do want to look at a few verses here. Um, 1 Corinthians 15.31 I affirm, brethren, by the boasting in you, in you which I believe in, which I have in Christ Jesus, our Lord, I die daily. Talking about that constant struggle, and in Romans seven nineteen, he actually talks again about a constant struggle here. Um, For the good that I want, I do not do, but I practice the very evil that I do not want. But if I'm doing the very thing that I do not want, I am no longer the one doing it, but sin which dwells in me. So once again, people find it hard to hard to understand both of these aspects. There is a middle ground there. Um, you are still a human, although you have been saved. It's a conflict that we have to live in um, until um, until we get to heaven. Hebrews ten twenty six um, says. For if we go on sinning willfully after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins. Um, so once again, talking about the way that you can't just live however you want as a Christian. Um, Philippians 4.8, and you know, in the passages before Philippians 4.8, he tells you how to do this. Okay, let me kind of explain. Philippians 4.8 says this. Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of uh, good repute, if there is any excellence, if anything worthy of praise, dwell in these things. Um, and so, oh, well, I can't change, change what I'm thinking about. Well, he just gave you an outline in verses 4 uh, through 7 of how to do that. So, um, that takes us to, um, also, keep in mind, uh, there's a few things I forgot to mention here. First, depend on him. Don't focus on the sin. We, we talked about that. Um, when you mess up, you're, you're depending on Christ's goodness, not your lack of goodness. Um, we can't do it by ourselves. So there is going to be a sin in your life that you, at least one, if not many, that um, you will not be able to just simply wish away. The druggie who can't get off drugs. The adulterer who can't get off porn. The... Um, a uh, person who can't stop gossiping, whatever it is, that thing that, that you just really, you can't get over. And so for that, don't get frustrated. You really can't do it by yourself. You, No matter what you do, you will never be good enough. Um, luckily, though, God gave this a solution for that, walking in the Spirit. When you stay in the Word and you stay in prayer and you seek after the Lord, first off, it gets a little bit easier because your focus changes to God. But then also, um, as you walk in the Spirit, you'll find that, you will overcome that thing. Okay, it's just because you're stuck in something now doesn't mean you have to die in it. Um, so, do we have to earn salvation through good deeds? Salvation is only through Christ. Obedience and good deeds are the result of following Christ. Okay, 
I know some people take the verse about being water baptized and say it is a sacrament, a sacrament that you need it for salvation. No, that makes salvation work centered. Um, some people would say um, you have to be a part of a certain organization like the Jehovah's Witness, or you have to do certain things. It's not about things. Salvation is only through Christ. Okay. Um, and we're going to look at a few verses that make that abundantly clear, and you can go elsewhere. I'm not, by all means not quoting every verse that there is, but um, um, Hebrews 11.6 says, And without faith it is impossible to please him, for he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. Um, so, but good deeds can never save us. Um, James 1, or James 2, 14 through 18 says, um, What use is it, my brethren, if someone uh, says he has faith, but he has no works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is without clothing and in need of daily food, and one of you say, uh, say, says to them, Go in peace, be warmed, and be filled, and yet you do not give them what is necessary for their body, what use is that? Even so, faith, if it has no works, is dead, being by itself. But someone may well say, you have faith, but I have works. Show me your faith without the works, and I will show you my faith by my works. Um, um, so one thing that's important to note is works are the result of true salvation. If you truly have faith and you truly uh, believe in God, works are the off branch of that. They're the fruit of that faith. Okay. However, the work does not establish the faith. The faith establishes the work. Okay. So don't get too bogged down with if somebody's teaching that you have to do certain things to be saved, they're lying to you because God already revealed that he, that you don't have to do anything. Um, you have to believe in him. Now, obviously, this mark that you really do believe in him is a changed life. If you're living the exact same way with no regard for God, then chances are you're not really saved. Um, just a good little tester of the faith there. Um, <clears throat> so works are about obeying and trusting, not salvation. Um, Romans 8.12 through 14 it says so then brethren we are under obligation not to the flesh to live according to the flesh for if you are living according to the flesh you must die but if by the spirit you are putting to death the deeds of the body you will live for all who are being led by the spirit of God these are the sons of God being led um, so uh, Galatians 5:16 says, but I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not carry out the desires of the flesh. And he talks about more of that there in Galatians. But uh, that takes us to, the, to a little example before we get to uh, the next point that I want to make. Um, in Exodus, uh, the Israelites left Egypt, okay? And they could not be any more out of Egypt than they were. They were out of Egypt. So in the same way, a person is either saved or not saved. I mean, there's no in-between. There's no... Uh, middle of the road there. And some people would then say, well, what about when you die? Can, can somebody be baptized for you or something like that? Um, and there's no biblical basis for that. Um, regarding the, the verse in 1 Corinthians 15, it doesn't say to do this. It doesn't say we do this. It says that people, some people, were doing this. Notice it switches from the first person, we, to the third, they. Okay? So keep in mind and also remember don't take one obscure verse like that passage and say okay so this is true what does the rest of scripture say does the rest of scripture say that you are baptized for your own sin or for someone else's teaches for your own sin so by taking that one verse out of context you contradict other parts of of, of the bible and you uh um I miss the point that Paul's trying to say. So why do I doubt? You know, no matter what you've done, you can be saved. 
the only time that you no longer have a chance to be saved is blasphemy of the Holy Spirit or death. In my experience, the majority of the times, death is the thing that prevented someone. So, um, and there's a lot of uh, controversy about what what is blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Um, it seems from the context, um, if you have a if God has, reveals Himself to you, and, and when, I'm sorry, when God reveals Himself to you and shows that He truly is. Um, God, and you reject the the sign and say that it is something bad, uh, basically calling the Holy Spirit uh, demonic. Um, that seems to be what it is. But once again, it's very vague, and, and there's a lot of controversy about what it is. So, why do I doubt? The first reason why people doubt is not forgiving a past offender. They hold on to a bitterness, and so as a result, the Lord doesn't forgive them. First off, but then also um, they uh, experience for, uh, doubt in their in their um, spirit. Uh, Matthew six twelve says, "And forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors." Um, is God forgiving you dependent on you forgiving others? Yes. Yes, absolutely. You cannot live your own way and then expect God to dance to your tune. Lord, this is what I said you need to do, and so you need to do it. Well, that's good for you, but God doesn't roll that way. So ask for forgiveness. What? So if somebody wronged me and I'm harboring resentment, I need to ask for forgiveness? Yes. Yes, you do. Um, if it was not one of those few, very few instances where you didn't do anything wrong to them, just in your spirit, um, it may be a bad idea to repent to them as that might cause a problem, in which case you'd confess your sin to the Lord. Um, use discretion. Um, secondly, not resolving a past conflict. Um, for that, just pursue peace. Matthew 5, 23 through 24 says, um, Therefore, if you are presenting your offering at the altar, and there, rem and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your offering there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother, and then come and present your offering. Um Oh, to obey is always better than sacrifice. Third, holding on to a sin. If you're if you've got something in your life that you know you shouldn't be doing, but you just won't stop doing it, that'll cause you to doubt. Hebrews three thirteen says, um, but encourage one another day after day, as long as it's still called today, so that none of you will be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. So yet hardened. When sin comes in, more sin always follows and it hardens you. Um, it's, think of it like this. You have a door to your heart, and when you sin, you crack open that door. And the more open it is, the more Satan can just walk in and have full reign. So, <clears throat> our ways, though, do not produce God's results. Our ways do not produce God's results. We cannot live our own way and then expect for, for good to come out of it. James puts it like this that the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. And that's kind of the same principle applies uh, here. <coughs> so if you keep seeking uh, him throughout these times and doing what you're supposed to, uh, <clears throat> faith will come. Can you have more and less faith? Yes, yes, you can have more and less faith. Mark 9.24 says... Um, Immediately the boy's father cried out and said, I do believe, help my unbelief. So there, you can definitely have a, a measure of faith. So, how do I know I am saved? Um, the first off is inner pay, in peace. Now I want to give this with a little bit of a caution, because inner peace comes and goes. And it, oftentimes it's dependent on, if is God working on in, um, in you? Uh, what is your focus on? Are you in the middle of a trial? I mean, there's just so many different things that that, that that feelings do come and go or blind us, you know. Um, for instance, one one feeling might blind your joy of salvation. Um, 8.16 uh, says of Romans, sorry, Romans 8.16. Um, says, um, the Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are children of God. 
testifies with our spirit. Also, a current pursuit of God. Are you actively today seeking? Are you right now obeying the Lord? Not are you perfect, but are you seeking after him? And if so, keep going. But I keep going. But I, you don't understand. I No, just keep going. See, we like to give little excuses about how our, our not being good takes away from God being good. And that's just not the case. Matthew 10, uh, 22 says, You will be hated by all because of my name, and it is the one who has endured to the end who will be saved. So once again, the already but not yet that we see there. That we are saved, but we are not fully experiencing that, I guess you'd say. I mean, obviously, you know, uh, Christians still have problems with cancer. People still have, you know, problems with this and that. And we're not, we still have, we still have the chance today of, of, of abandoning the faith if we should so choose. John 8, 31 to 33. So Jesus was saying to, the, to those Jews who had believed him, if you continue in my word, then you are truly disciples of mine, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are Abraham's descendants, and have never yet been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say you will become free? Um, where did I want to read to? Uh, 32. Oh, I'm sorry. I was supposed to stop at 32. The truth will make you free. Um, so, um, I do want to point something out before I go to the last point of this. Um, you are either actively moving forward or moving backwards. There's no such thing as a plateau. There's no such thing as settling. Right when you get to a place that you're doing good is right, the play, right at the point where you start going backwards. Um, so really be on guard about that. Oh, I, I, I'm doing really good. Watch out. It won't be for long. Um, in the Christian life, if you are not actively pursuing God, you are moving backwards. Um, so um, also, is there an inner desire to obey God and conviction at disobedience. This grows with time and perseverance as you seek. Okay. Over the course of time, if you persevere and seek after the Lord, th this will get stronger and stronger. Um, not everybody was born a golden child. I know sometimes people look at some people in the church and say, "Oh, well, they've always been, you know, the good ones or whatever." No, that's just what the Lord does in us. Now, I do want to say one thing while I'm, while I'm turning here. We're supposed to outdo our parents in a sense. Our parents, you know, they did their job. Now it's our job to take what we learned there, learn from it, not be a fool, and then improve on it. And then our kids, hopefully, will learn from that and improve on that. So you've got generations of knowledge and, and obedience to the Lord to just add on each other. Um, so, uh, Romans... I keep losing my place. Uh, Romans 8.14 says, um, For all who are being led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. I'm talking about that being led. And I know I, I talked about talked about Romans 8.14 earlier. I just want to emphasize a different aspect of it. So, um, uh, life, your spiritual walk, work, struggles, etc. are easier if you're not on drugs or alcohol. I will say that. You know, oh, well, I'm having problems with this. Or do, do you drink? Just lay off the alcohol for a little while and watch how much easier things get. Um, now, obviously, you have to get past the original hangover, depending on um, how much you were into alcohol, um, or if you're on drugs. Once you once you stop taking drugs, your mind clears up and you start thinking thing, thinking differently and you start processing things differently. So, um, by all means, get help. You know, I mean, there's counselors, there's like there's um, psychologists, there's doctors. Get help. You know. Um, Get a get a physical evaluation. See if there's anything medical that that that, um, that could be resolved and make it easier. You see what I mean? Like um, we don't have to reject knowledge in, in our in our struggle against the flesh. Um, so can I lose my salvation? No, you can give it away. How do you give it away? Well, by rejecting the Lord. And usually this is either um, this and usually this is over a period of time where we um, choose a sin and we keep in that sin. And so as a result, uh, we get hardened, and then we just kind of leave the faith. For if we go on sinning willfully after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins, but a terrifying expectation of judgment and the fury of a fire which will consume the adversaries. Anyone who has set aside the law of Moses dies without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. How much severer punishment do you think he, uh, he will deserve who has trampled underfoot the Son of God and has regarded as unclean the blood of the covenant by which he has sanctified and was, has insulted the Spirit of grace? Um, 
Um, and then, um, so dis disobedience produces disbelief. And in chapter 6, uh, it says, uh, and then have fallen away. It is impossible to renew them again to repentance. Now, some people have said that it's impossible for them to repent. That's not what it says. It is impossible to renew them to repentance. If someone is living in sin who claims to be a Christian, what are you going to preach to them? They already are trampling over Jesus, so you're not going to preach Jesus to them. So is there another way to salvation? Well, no. So it is impossible for you to renew that person to salvation. Uh, I mean, it seems pretty cut, pretty simple there. Um, so you can give it away, but you can't just lose your salvation. Salvation isn't this fickle thing that we randomly drop and pick back up again. Uh, that's not how it is. Um, so... Um, if you are living in disobedience, repent and call on the, on the name of the Lord today. As, as long as it's still called today, you still have the opportunity to be saved. So, as, if we are still breathing, we can repent. Hebrews 3, 7 through 8 says, um, Therefore, just as the Holy Spirit says, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as when they provoke me, as in the day of uh, trial in the wilderness. So, uh, when should I accept? First off, do not accept lightly. I know some people just want to get people into the kingdom so fast that they uh, make them uh, make them think this is a, a real simple decision. It's not a simple decision. You're talking about a life change. You're talking about, you know, is there? do you feel like there's ample proof to put faith in God? Well, then do it. See what I mean? Like, um, And then once you make the decision, stick with it. Um, so, but do not accept lightly. Ugh. Man, it's so hot outside and the air conditioner's on and it makes me feel all gross. Um, <clears throat> either do or do not serve God, but nobody's forcing you to choose God. Um, it, but it is a lifestyle. Luke 14. And I'm not going to read the account, but I am going to point you there. Luke 14, verses 25 through 35. Um, I'll read the, the, the beginning part and kind of just fill in the blanks after that. Now large crowds were gathered and were going along with him, and he turned and said to them, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, and even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Um, whoever does not carry his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which one of you, when he wants to build a tower, does not first sit down and calculate the cost to see if he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who observe it begin to ridicule him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. See, you not only bring shame on yourself, you bring shame on the Lord. Um, you are holding him up to shame. And Hebrews talks about this. Or what king, when he sets out to meet another king in battle, will not first sit down and consider whether he is strong enough with 10,000 men to encounter with one coming against him with 20,000? Or else, while the other is, is, uh, is still far away, he sends a delegation and asks for terms of peace. So then, none of you can be my disciple who does not give up all his own possessions. Therefore, salt is good, but if even salt has become tasteless, with what will it be seasoned? Um, it is useless either for the soil or for the manure pile. It is thrown out. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. So, um, let there be some kind of a uh, thought process here. Um, if you desire salvation, though, now is the time. Hebrews 4, 6 through 7. Um, and I'm getting to the end here. Um, it says, um, Therefore, since it remains for some to enter, and those who formerly had good news preached to them failed to enter because of disobedience, he again fixes a certain day, today, saying through David, after so long a time, just as has been said before, today if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. So, um, also, uh, Romans 10.13. And notice how he did say that in that verse. He said, um, he says through David. He's talking about how the way that God speaks through David. Um, obviously establishing what I was talking about in the first lesson. Um, For whoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved. So, we do not have an important, uh, we do not have a list of important things with God as number one. We make everything in our lives revolve around God. What we like to do is we like to have, okay, here's my box of God and religion, here's my box of, you know, work and finances, and here's my box 
box of, of family or whatever. That's not how it is. Here's your life with all that it includes, and God is over and in all of it. Okay? Um, so, animals, angels, and things cannot receive salvation. Only humans can. The Bible makes it abundantly clear. Angels are ne were never given the given the ch or demons, I guess. Now, uh, were never given the opportunity to repent. Animals do not have souls. They were not made in the image of God, and can, therefore cannot be saved. And the Bible constantly talks about men being saved, and people uh, accepting, um, and things cannot. And also, animals don't have that kind of a choice. Um, so, um, and things cannot receive salvation. I mean, this seems obvious. You know, TVs and that kind of stuff, for instance. I mean, things cannot receive salvation. Only humans can. Um, deciding to follow Christ is the greatest decision you will ever make. I mean, marriage is... Uh, you do something wrong, for instance, and, and it could potentially end. Um, depending on how great of a, of a mess up you did. But with God, he is faithful past our faith faithlessness. And... So when we mess up, we seek him, and he forgives us, and then he starts changing us. So, <clears throat> life does not become perfect or struggle-free when you are a Christian. Think of it like this. Does buying an umbrella make it not rain? Well, no, of course not. So why would salvation cause life to not happen? In fact, sometimes it can actually make it worse. Um, if you don't know, um, an organization called VOM, Voice of the Martyrs, VOM um, shares information on Christians nowadays who are being martyred and killed and um, persecuted. So, simply buying sunglasses does nothing. You must wear them. Focus on God is what I'm saying. Um, you, you must seek after God. I mean, I hope you understand the uh, understand the image there. If you don't, just think about it a little bit and. Uh, but anyways, that takes us to the end of this lesson. If you have any questions, put it there at the bottom on my YouTube, and I will um, I will respond. Um, so next uh, next lesson is God. Thank you for watching.